Hello again, everyone. Welcome to Washington Gun Law TV. I'm Washington Gun Law President William Kirk. Thanks for joining us. California was a big day for you, wasn't it? Your governor signed a lot of new con gun control pieces of legislation into law today. Now, this, of course, follows on the tremendous success, or rather tremendous ass whooping, that the state of California took in Duncan v. Bonta, which continues a long and illustrious losing streak that the state of California is racking up on the federal court level. Rather than, of course, you know, readjust the way you do business and start writing laws consistent with the constitutional mandates of the Supreme Court and various other federal courts, no, the state of California says, yeah, well, watch this. And so today, we saw the governor of California son sign not one, not two, not three, but 23 pieces of civilian disarmament legislation. We're gonna get you up to speed on some of them, especially the ones you really need to pay attention to. So today, let's spend a few minutes and let's talk about California, the Death Star of civilian disarmament. Okay, before we get going too far down the road, this video is about California. We always take an opportunity to give a big shout out to our first ever California subscriber. Of course, that is Philip P. Philip P. has been spreading the gospel of Washington gun law down in California since I had the COVID do rolling. Philip P., this video is for you. Now, as we know, your state legislature and governor have been really, really busy. Uh, we had 23 pieces of civilian disarmament legislation signed by Governor Newsom today. Now, this is a list here of all of the legislation signed by the governor. It comes from our good friends over at the Firearms Policy Coalition. I am not going to get through all of them. I do not want to get through all of them. Candidly, I did read all of them. Some of them I don't even understand because California, I can't even figure out your goofy gun laws sometimes. But uh, in particular order of importance and some that are grabbing attention, let's talk about what the governor did sign into legislation today. Let's start, of course, with the big one. That's Senate Bill 2. Senate Bill 2 is the Bruin response bill. It's basically California's equivalent of New York's Concealed Carry Improvement Act. This is after the Supreme Court smacks you down that rather than you, you know, adjust to the constitutional mandates of the highest court in the land, you say, oh yeah, watch this, and you figure out different and more unique ways to screw your citizens out of their otherwise inalienable rights. California's Concealed Carry licensing regime will be completely rewritten. They will not have any of the good cause requirements they will come up with many other different ways in which they will keep you from getting licensed. The other big deal, and this is a big deal, is that California has now redefined sensitive areas similar to what New York did and basically made the entire state of California a sensitive area, which regardless of your concealed carry status, you will not be able to carry a firearm. Now, the ink was barely dry on that bill when the good folks at the Firearms Policy Coalition said, yeah, I don't think so. And so in the matter of Carolero v. Bonta, which is filed in the United States District Court, Central District of California, the Firearms Policy Coalition has already filed a lawsuit and have already requested a temporary injunction on this law. I have already pulled the pleadings down offline. I'm going to have a chance to check them out. We'll probably be doing a follow-up video. So once again, kudos to the folks at FPC. They jump right into the fray right away and start fighting for your what are supposed to be inalienable rights. That is Senate Bill 2. That's one where we're going to likely see a lot more coverage on. Okay, now the other one. Assembly Bill 28. Assembly Bill 28 was signed into legislation today. I know some people thought that Governor Newsom might veto this. I don't know why, because it actually involves two of Governor Newsom's favorite things to do, which one is, is disarm its citizens, and number two, tax the living hell out of its citizens. Assembly Bill 28 now mandates a new 11% excise tax on top of all firearms and ammunition that are sold anywhere in the state of California. This is a law that says they're going to raise these funds so that they can use it for gun violence prevention. But really what they're trying to do is try to basically price individuals out of their inalienable rights. This is essentially a modern day poll tax. Okay, That is Assembly Bill 28. Then there's Assembly Bill 1089. This is an interesting one. I actually had to read this one because I wasn't really sure if I was reading it correctly. This not only outlaws 3D printed guns, it actually outlaws many 3D printers and it also includes 3D printers on the list now of California's firearm related products. So if you guys 
by chance are into 3D printing, even if it's not for firearms and firearm components. You might want to pay careful attention to Assembly Bill 1089. It was written by a bunch of fools who have written it in a very overbroad fashion. This is likely going to start encapsulating much, much more innocuous and innocent activity under the purview of this statute. This one is destined to be a disaster. Other pieces of legislation that were signed today, Assembly Bill 1598, this updates some of the mandatory training requirements for firearm safety cards. And I do want everyone to pay attention down in California because it's telling the committee that they have to go back and rewrite what the training requirements would be. And we saw what happened in New Jersey where basically they developed the John Wick style training. Now, New Jersey has since backed off on that, but this would be an excellent way if you were trying to advance civilian disarmament is to put together a training regiment that is impossible to complete. Okay, Assembly Bill 92 and Assembly Bill 301 is the attack on body armor. So now under Assembly Bill 92, if you are a convicted felon and thus otherwise ineligible to possess a firearm, you are also ineligible to possess body armor. Under Assembly Bill 301, under California's red flag laws now, the accumulation, purchasing, or acquiring of body armor is now a factor that the court can consider in deciding whether or not to issue a red flag order. Assembly Bill 355 actually puts in an exemption now so that law enforcement can loan semi-automatic rifles, or what California calls assault weapons, to fellow officers or officers who are in training. Technically, if you took a look at California's soon to be struck down assault weapon ban, Miller v. Bonta, uh, yeah, an officer could not actually loan a semi-automatic rifle to a cadet going through the academy. So good work, California. Assembly Bill 455 creates new categories for which a person can be deemed ineligible to possess a firearm. It takes a look at some of California's alternative criminal dispositions and now includes them as methods by which you will be disqualified from possessing a firearm. Assembly Bill 1406 allows the state to request additional time to conduct more investigation for a background check. Put in other terms, this is a blank check for your state to take its sweet old time deciding whether or not they're ever going to allow you to purchase a firearm. Okay, Assembly Bill 1420 is a whole new reporting requirement for FFLs and a new database that is gonna be kept on FFL behavior, including behavior unrelated to the FFL business. So FFLs, you need to check out Assembly Bill 1420. And then finally, let's talk about Assembly Bill 1587. We've already talked about this more on a national level. This is a push for uh, credit card um, purveyors, credit card companies, merchants, and financial institutions to create tracking codes and other merchant codes so that it is more easily discernible to discover the individuals who are purchasing firearms and ammunition. Under Assembly Bill 1587, the state of California will now mandate this for all credit card companies and merchants so that it would be more easier for the state to track the purchase of firearms, firearm components, and ammunition. Now, what's going to happen? Well, the lawsuits are going to start filing. We've already seen Firearms Policy Coalition throw down on Senate Bill 2. I expect to see additional lawsuits filed on Assembly Bill 28, the exercise tax, as well as Assembly Bill 1089 on the 3D printers. And there are likely going to be lawsuits on many of these other ones. We're going to have to carefully watch to see how these go. And as we know, many of these lawsuits will be much like fine wine. They apparently get better with age. That is what happened in Sacramento today. Your governor is currently icing down his shoulder and elbow after signing all 23 pieces of civilian disarmament legislation. Listen, if you got any questions about this or anything else related to what's left of our Second Amendment rights, you guys should know how to get a hold of Washington Gun Law by now. If you don't, that's okay. That information's right down there in the description box. Now, in the meantime, let's everyone remember that part of being the lawful and responsible gun owner, like we talk about all the time here, is to know what the law is in every situation, how it applies to you in any instance that you may find yourself. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay safe. <laughs>